2012, climate change made headlines. Countries struggled between turmoil and transition, putting the United Nations to the test to negotiate peace and define a future we want for all. In Syria, violence spiraled out of control. Fighting and human rights abuses by government and opposition groups left, according to some estimates, over 40,000 people dead and forced hundreds of thousands to flee. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon. We must stop the violence and flows of arms to both sides and set in motion a Syria-led transition as soon as possible. The UN Security Council could not agree on action to stop the bloodshed. US Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. The international community should say with one voice, without hesitation or caveat, that the killings of innocent Syrians must stop and a political transition must begin. But some argued for caution. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov. There is no doubt whatsoever that the Syrian authorities bear a huge share of responsibility for the situation. But one shouldn't ignore the fact that for a long time now they have been fighting not unarmed men, but combat units such as the Syrian Free Army and extremist groups including Al-Qaeda. Syria's UN ambassador Bashar al-Jafari accused some council members of actually fueling the flames. The same countries are undermining my country's sovereignty by encouraging terrorism and by supplying and providing all types of logistical and political support to armed groups in Syria. The joint special envoys of the UN and the Arab League Kofi Annan and later Lakhdar Brahimi presented plans to end the violence and start dialogue. But the various Syrian parties failed to reach an agreement to end the conflict. The Security Council sent 300 unarmed observers to investigate alleged massacres and other human rights violations and monitor a ceasefire that never really took hold. While the violence continues, the humanitarian needs are escalating in Syria and beyond. The World Food Programme is scaling up to feed 1.5 million people in the country. In Gaza, a new cycle of violence erupted after months of standstill in negotiations between the Palestinians and the Israelis. Secretary General Ban Ki-moon headed to the region to personally appeal for a ceasefire. In late November, a great majority of countries approved a UN General Assembly resolution to elevate Palestine to a non-member observer state at the UN. Libya saw its first free and transparent elections in half a century. The UN Development Programme assisted in setting up voting booths and ballot boxes. While the UN Mine Action Service removed 180,000 explosives all over the country to help create stability and prevent arms smuggling across the region. Instability and turmoil in nearby Mali. After a military coup toppled the government, Islamic jihadists used the power of vacuum to occupy the country's north. Refugees have flooded the Sahel region, which is suffering from drought and pervasive poverty. The African Union urged the UN Security Council to endorse military intervention to free northern Mali from the extremists. African so Union's permanent to observer to the UN, Antonio Tete. Mali is at crossroads. Time is of a sense. We need to act fast and to send a clear and strong message on the resolve of the international community and its support to the African-led efforts. In the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of the Congo, renewed fighting between government forces and rebel troops left two million people displaced and a million vulnerable children at even greater risk. As rebel soldiers advanced on the city of Goma in late November, the UN peacekeeping mission deployed attack helicopters to help the National Army protect civilians amid the violence. 
A first birthday for South Sudan as diplomatic efforts by the UN Security Council help to ease tensions with neighbor Sudan over unresolved issues such as its borders and oil production. U.S. Ambassador Susan Rice. The agreements that were signed last week in Addis on security, oil, finances, nationality and trade issues were very important and potentially historic. Nuclear worries about Iran as world leaders continue to question the country's uranium enrichment program. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. A red line should be drawn right here. Before, before Iran completes the second stage of nuclear enrichment necessary to make a bomb. Iran insisted on the peacefulness of its nuclear program, and President Ahmadinejad accused the General Assembly of applying double standards. The United Nations, which were created with the purpose of expanding justice and reinstituting universal rights, have, in practice, been engulfed by discrimination, preparing a supportive ground for the domination of a few powerful countries. Myanmar's Nobel laureate and pro-democracy activist, Aung San Suu Kyi, received a hero's welcome at the UN in Geneva and New York. Elected to parliament after years of house arrest, she invited international aid to build a better future for her country. If we all want to achieve genuine democracy for Burma, we have to learn to work together. In 2012, Storms and severe weather left countries ravaged across the globe. A stark reminder that the threat of climate change is real. Action on climate change was a major topic at the UN's Rio Plus 20 summit in Brazil, where 40,000 people gathered to discuss developmental strategies for the 21st century. We are on a dangerous road. We cannot continue to burn and consume our ways to prosperity at the expense of world's poor and the global environment. My message to world leaders is clear. Sustainable development is an idea whose time has come. At the summit, 191 countries agreed on an outcome document called A Future We Want. A future that has already started in Indonesia, where the UN-inspired project Teens Go Green motivates students from all over the country to make environmental protection a priority. We have to work on changing our mindset. If teenagers get to know the issues, then we can keep the commitment to the environment going in the future. Young people everywhere are contributing to the changes, but no one more so than the year's youngest and possibly greatest hero, Malala Yousafzai a 15-year-old girl from Pakistan who survived an assassination attempt by Taliban gunmen, who accused her of promoting education for girls. The terrorists showed what frightens them most, a girl with a book. 2012 will be remembered as a complex and challenging year for the United Nations. Conflict, poverty, natural disasters, Terrorism and human rights violations continue to plague humankind. The United Nations remains the global forum for discussing and solving some of the world's most difficult problems. Carrying the torch for all these issues, Ban Ki-moon, at the Olympics in London, implored the world to keep the fire burning for tolerance, peace and harmony. For the future we want.